In this video, I'll show you how to use Velocity Keyboard to control Animog and how to get the aftertouch working. I'm opening up Animog and I'll take this uh, gritty attack preset that's come up automatically. I need to make sure that background audio is on and it is and now I'm ready to go into my MIDI controller. Here's Velocity Keyboard. I'm taking the MPAE base preset. I'm going to leave everything at default settings and set my destination to Animog. Um, I can take the full range of velocity for this. I'm having trouble getting Animog to support polyphonic aftertouch, so I'm going to switch over to channel aftertouch and then based on how I move within the key, I'm getting my aftertouch control, which this ends up being very similar to what we have if we're using the keyboards in Animoog. I prefer this method. I'm going to use the touch radius, which is measuring the area of contact between the skin on my finger and the screen. And I'll set that up to use channel aftertouch, not polyphonic, uh, because I, I wasn't able to get that to work with Animoog. So now I'm pressing down. And there's a little bit of a problem here. What's happening is uh, when I'm using channel aftertouch, as I start the note, there hasn't been any channel aftertouch message sent, so it's at a default value. But then when I start moving my finger, it starts sending CC messages and Animal corrects to, uh, to match the value I'm sending. And that, that means that I touch the note and it's loud and then I start to dig into it and it actually gets softer, which isn't what I want. I can fix that just by um, reducing the range a little bit. So this will limit the, it will prevent a uh, velocity keyboard from sending out a value that's too small. And that's, that's basically what I want when I'm, when I'm doing aftertouch. Uh, so that's it. Um, that's a very short tutorial on setting up Velocity Keyboard to work with Animog using Aftertouch. Enjoy!